So, Colin, here you have a bit more about some defensive breakdowns from IRI. Why don't you take us away? Thank you. So while all, almost all of the greatest uh, offensive powerhouses joined up in IRI, one of the biggest talking points was just all of the defenders and how well they're doing each match, how much of a difference it was making to the outcomes of every single match. So I'm a, I thought I'd take a look at a couple of different matches where there were some interesting um, defensive strategies that I think we can all take a little lesson from. So this first match, it's going to be quarterfinal match six and it's to be we're going to focus on 1241 theory six and watch how they're able to essentially lock down 319 for half the match just because they had really smart positioning so tyler's going to start the video up we're going to watch through sandstorm and notice on the right side on the red side 1241 is already they back up and they're probably looking through their driver camera right now ready to just charge straight on to play defense and you see right away they charge and they box 319 right in and 319 stuck 1241 is just going to go back and forth 319's trying to get by it's been about 10 seconds already and 319 has done nothing and they eventually slip by and go ahead and pause right here so 319 just picked up a cargo and if you and if you were 1241 right now i would be thinking all right, where is 319 going to want to score this? And if you look on the field, if, if 319 is going to try to, like typically teams want to do, is stay on the right side so they're going to stay away from their, their partner, there's only there's really only like one place where they can score is that's on the side on the cargo ship. So 1241 knows that's where they're going to go. So they're already kind of set up there so that once they come around, they're just going to T-bone them, try to get them misaligned, maybe push them across the line. So go ahead and resume. And that's exactly what they're fighting a little bit. And 319 luckily gets it right in, even though they kind of split the difference. And they go back and they get another cargo. And you see 1241 readjust because they know the same thing's going to happen again because there's nowhere else where 319 can score right now. And it looks, it makes 319 just look like they don't, because they, they 1241's just defending these two s small spots that are like three feet away from each other. So they don't even really need to move that much. And 319 has to do like big loops. They have to turn around each time. Making it looking, it's not looking good for them. What they really should have tried to do better is utilize the rocket ship so that they can split the defense. So this defense doesn't know. And at 70 seconds, it's already been like halfway through the match. 319 eventually decides, all right, I've had enough of this. I'm gonna go over to the other side of the field and score with my teammate. And that's that's actually pretty like that's exactly what they should have done in this situation. But it does bring 1241 and crowds up that area. And again, the pressure that 1241 is bringing causes them to miss that one cargo right there. And again, 1241 is not going to let them score where they want to. They're going to have to go across the field again, get in their partner's way. And then there's the whole uh, crisscross of the offense. And at this point, 1241's defense kind of falls off, but they've already really done their damage. 35 seconds left in the match, and 319 scored like three game pieces. I say that's a pretty good win on their defense. And you can see they're still they're still hold, trapping them in. I think that's a really smart play. Whenever a robot gets past the rocket, just get behind them so they can't get back and do another cycle. So I think right here, 319 probably wanted to do another cargo cycle, but just decided to just go climb. So I, I, re I really think the biggest takeaway from this match is whenever you're targeting a team, watch what they pick up and have – have in the back of their minds, like keep track of all the possible places where they can score and watch out if there's only one place that they can score, just beat them to that spot and just sit there. And then they'll have to make, they'll either struggle for 30 seconds to try to score there, or they'll have to go on the other side of the field and clog up that side. So any, anyone else have comments on, on, on this match? Definitely. Like it's accurate. Like there's, there's different types of defense, right? There's your smash mm -hmm. mouth. I'm gonna ram you. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna I'm not gonna let you do anything. I'm gonna hit you bumper to bumper as hard as I can, as many times as I can. And then um, there's this more positional type defense where you just, like you said, they twelve three nineteen hadn't scored any hatches, so the rockets rockets out of the question. You know mm -hmm. they're not gonna score there. They kept grabbing cargo. Like you don't want. One of the worst things you can do is be predictable. Yeah. Yes. And uh, that's where the, the nice little spin move comes in. That I saw 319 trying to do a few times, but they're a bit slow at it, where you yeah. like go forward, go backwards, you know, try to like 
do some soccer moves. Yeah. yeah. Usually cool it's stuff, it's though. it's gonna be way easier to make a good mo- maneuver like that if you have more options to score at. But since three nineteen like kind of boxed themselves in and only had that one area where they could score, it made it really easy. It made it way too easy to defend them. So we can go ahead and move on to the next one. But I, that's that's one of the main things that I try to train uh, the drivers in seventeen ten, and they they try to train to people who defend with them is watch what your opponents are grabbing at the loading station because if if you see that they're going and grabbing a hatch don't try to like block them from getting to the cargo just sit right in front of where you think they're gonna score the next hatch especially when they're going on the rocket it's pretty easy to just lock into the corner so this next match that we just pulled up it's going to be um a a qualification match uh 82 and we're going to focus on 5205 playing defense on 1114. And I didn't pick this match because I thought it was exceptional defense or even like that great of defense. I think that there's a lot of lessons that we can learn from watching the way that 5205 plays defense on 1114. And also 1114 makes some interesting countermeasures that I think <laughs> we can point out. Um, so before we, gonna, before we see contact here, uh, 5205 has quite a few Omni wheels on their drivetrain, and that kind of contributes to their lack. You can you can keep playing, actually, but that kind of makes that gives the advantage to 1114 on these pushing matches. Which defense isn't all about pushing, but 1114 takes full advantage of this and is able to just push 4205 out of the way to create space. And then once they push them out of the way, they're gonna go back in the other direction and line up and score really quickly. And they do this countless times so you see they're going to back up push create space and then they're going to go score in the other direction and it kind of puts 4205 on the back fo- back foot where they're not in the position that they want to be to block block them out see again they're going to push them out of the way turn around do a little j turn and score real fast and what 5205 really needs to recognize here is they're not going to be able to like stop 1114 from getting where they want they just need to beat 1114 to the spot I actually do a pretty good job here hitting them right as they're trying to line up, makes them drop the hatch panel. That was really good play right there. And again, right here, they're trying to trying to hold them back in. Really, should, I, I think they should have just tried to stay sideways there and make sure they try to an- angle themselves so that 1114 has to go around them instead of just going to the left towards the loading station where they want to go. Oh, and pause right here. You can see this head ref is counting these pen counts. And as that's happening, 1114 does not move an inch. Usually you would see robots in, in this situation try to continue to line up, and some rest will uh, see that as them moving back towards the pin, and then they'll call off the pin because it doesn't count anymore. But you see 1114 does not move here, and they draw the pin count. And then at this point, the Red Alliance robot doesn't want to get another penalty, so they're going to drive further away, making it super easy for 1114 to take their time and line it up. So you can go ahead and resume here. 1114 gets a defense-free placement right there, and 5205 really wasn't in the best position to be able to block their way. Here, 5205 does a good job and makes them go to the middle. Still, the, the problem that 5205 is facing here is that 1114 isn't trying to finish the rocket, so they have so many different options. Almost the opposite of 319 last match, because they have their partner on the other side of the field, who is I think they're already done with the rocket. So 1114 is playing like it's a like it's a elimination match where they can score anywhere they want. So they're able to just push 5205 out of the way and then just score anywhere where it's open. Um, anyone else have uh, any other hosts? Let's talk about this match. Yeah, just uh, as to the uh, – that's what I tell so many people about pitting. I'm like, the second you move towards the robot that was pitting you, that counts over. Like, mm-hmm. the ref's going to wave it off. I'm like, yeah. if you're getting pinned, like, stay there. Don't move. Like, that's... I know, like, everybody wants to try to, like, jerk and escape and do it. But, like, the second, like, you, you move your robot, you turn your robot towards that other robot, pins invalidated. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so, like, that's such a smart move by 1114. Like, it's – like, that's a – yeah, I, I saw well. that right away. That's why I wrote yeah. this yeah. match down. Yeah. I mean, Especially super, in... Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Especially no, in like that good. situation where you're placing on the rocket, teams usually try to pin you right against that wall to kind of put you off angle. Mm-hmm. Just sit there and let, let the pin count. Because if you talk to the refs after matches and like make sure they're counting that 
distance right the robot should have to go all the way out and like around the cargo ship so you'll get a free free placement so just sit there and you should be able to either draw draw a pin or sort of get free mm-hmm. yeah that's just yeah. such such good coaching mm-hmm. yeah, yeah that was really good calls right yeah, there. yeah we got a we got a comment here um from Vaporwave Inc., the instant 1114 goes to the far side of the rocket. 5205 should orient perpendicular mm-hmm. to them and box them in. The problem is 5205's drivetrain is like... Yeah, yeah. it's got it, Omnis on it, you know. It's like Omnis, it's like... I'm trying to think of how to describe it. I don't know the name it. It, it. Looked, I, it looked like yeah. Butterfly. Yeah, oh. it's, something it's, like that. it's almost butterfly, but like it's like I think there's eight Omni wheels on the bottom that are all kind of like angled almost in a circle, but not really. It's like two that are kind of at an angle, and then two and then two and then two. And it's so they don't really have a perpendicular because of their drivetrain, which makes it very hard for them to play defense. Huh. I don't kind I, of I, like I, said, I, I didn't look super close at the drivetrain. Mm-hmm. And then. Even though like there's all these little flaws in the defense, they still did a fairly decent job of like getting eleven fourteen out of the rhythm, not letting them just go where like freely. And eleven fourteen, I think, only scores eight only, but o- only eight, uh, only eight during, you know. during teleop. But like if they if they went untouched that match, they would have been like thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So they still made a good delta and advantage on that. So we can go ahead and move on to the next match. Which again features eleven fourteen in their quarterfinal five, and this was when I saw this defender. It was thirty three. I'm talking about. Um, I thought, man, they should have been playing defense all year. This is so good. Um, they in the previous Flash match they completely it. locked down eleven fourteen, but I chose the the second match of the quarterfinals because it's on the front side and you're able to see what they're doing a little bit more clearly. So go ahead and roll this match. Perfect. 33 playing defense is mm-hmm. one of my favorite things that they do. Like flashback to 2016 when they were just pulled that out in finals of IRI. Yep. So we'll see the sandstorm. And in the last match, 11 14, like went on the far side of the field and they got shut down by 33. So I think this, this time they wanted to come close out of the field, maybe shake things up, get themselves an advantage. But you'll see it doesn't really work out. 33 right off the bat. Puts them in a nice T-bone. Their their drive chain is really great, and they're able to just push eleven fourteen around. And you see there, they're they're whenever eleven fourteen tries to line up to the rocket, instead of just trying to pin them against the wall, thirty three tries to get right in front of them to to deny any possibility of them placing it. And it's really just the driver being thinking ahead. Oh, right here. Also, thirty three comes straight on, and eleven fourteen is forced to like turn away. And what I like to point out with this with this defense is it almost looks like 33 knows where 1114 wants to go, and they're just racing them there and beating them to the spot every single time, just like right there. They knew they were going to place that hatch panel. They almost telegraphed it, and 33 just beats them to the spot. And then once they line up, they're they're not letting up. They're going to keep keep pounding 1114, and they eventually get their first placement of tally up with um, 76... 70 seconds left and 33 is already like perfectly positioned right here ready ready to uh to block 114 out so they can't get right there and here they they barely miss hitting the back of the bumper which is right where you want to aim because that's going to spin the robot if you aim toward the back of the robot and here perfect t-bone they're just refs typically don't count this as a pin because it's not against the wall but it it's the same you're immobilizing them for quite a bit of time and and again, they're just they're just not letting them get to. Uh, it looks like they're trying to get to the back of the rocket here. Just continually t-boning them here. And and you see that like 25 seconds, they're still not letting up. So far, 114 scored I think two game pieces, and then they just get that one. 33 is going to harass 2056 on the way back to climb. And the match is basically over at this point. They're going to fight with 195 at the end here. But what what did, what did, what do the other hosts think of this? I love when 33 plays defense because nobody Me expects too. it. Like yeah. their, dri- <laughs> their, their driver, I've seen him play defense because I've been at a few of their events this year. 
Um, and their driver, what he's played defense a handful of times. Usually, if something breaks, then they'll go over and switch to defense. Um, but I'm talking like by handful. I mean, I think this is like the quarterfinals here. We're probably there's fourth and fifth matches playing defense all season. But he's just a great defensive driver um, all around. It's just 33 never always has to be the offense spot. They never get to be the defense spot. That's yeah. why I arise a crazy place. Same with 195, right? Mm-hmm. 195 does a pretty good job at defense. Yep. And they just, mm-hmm. it's just something they never do because when you're the only, you know, it's a quals match, it's at a district, you're likely the only offensive robot on that line or the only quality offensive robot. And so you don't get that, you don't get to be the one who goes over and plays defense. But the fact that they held in this, this match, they held 11 14 to two game pieces under defense, and then they scored mm-hmm. that third one at the Nuts. end after 33 left. Yeah. In the in the first quarterfinals match, they held 11-14 to one Teleop game yep. piece. Yeah. They held, it's just the view is bad. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, it's, but it's like they held 11-14 to one hatch yeah. in and the, the entire match. They did the exact same thing in the first match. Like, yeah. it, the, Just like looking at them, they look like they're driving like it's their last match because they're just driving yeah. super aggressively. They're not afraid to... Like just drive as fast as they can to get to hit the robot. Like they're not trying to be causing damage. It's all bumper to bumper, but they're driving with a like a, like the conviction. They know where they want to go, yeah. and they're just getting there as fast as they can. And he's so good. Uh, their driver is so good. He was. You, you watch him like like scoop in every time eleven fourteen tries yeah. to score. That he slides it at the he last slides, second. Yeah, right. Like, yeah, beats whatever. him to the he's, spot. Every single time he's scooping right in, and it's just the maneuverability he manages to pull out of that robot, and just the speed he can drive it is great. And um, he didn't graduate, so he's driving their robot next year because he's a he was a junior last year. So that's fun. So we can assume uh, I I I can assume he'll be driving 33's bot next year too. So uh, that'll be fun to see too. Yeah, another thing just from that match is 33 stays on the other side of the field pretty late in the game. I mean, they're out of there at, well, like, seven seconds left in the match, and they're not afraid of touching the rocket to get another ranking point uh, because this is um, quarterfinals, it's Elims, you don't get the mm. overarching other ranking point from that. So You also straight up don't get the foul points either. Yeah, like the foul yeah. Is not even a penalty. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's not even a penalty at that point. Yeah. So, you know, you can stay over there up until you're willing to lose your climb for it. So, yeah. Which is pretty does, interesting which, stuff. Which 33 wasn't the climber on that alliance because, uh, yeah, because spe- hypothetically it was uh, appreciate and spectrum could double. I don't know if they managed to pull it off. I wasn't on their side of the field. But um, so it was, and but the bees can't double with anyone unless they were trying their triple climb, which just did not work. And they went mm. to Elims. They were like, "Nope, we're not even going to try it." Um, but it's uh, so, but they knew they couldn't double. So I think that was they didn't have to be. They weren't going to be the one to go climb, so they could stay as late as they needed to. Yeah, um, and, and then you can ba- prevent eleven fourteen from scoring like two or yeah. three more game pieces in that time too. Yeah, and then uh, vaporwave uh, in the. She said 195 appeared to stay later. It's same same uh, concept with 195. They weren't the they weren't the climber on that alliance, so they weren't going for a double. They weren't going for a triple. 195 and 33 could both stand defense as long as they wanted to. Perfect. So I think before we wrap up, uh, we're going to show one of the coolest parts of IRI is the uh, the charity auction that they run each year. This year. It was raising funds for 4418 Team Impulse. Tyler, uh, decided to give a run through of some of the awesome items you may have missed out this year at IRI. One of the coolest things every year that I love to do a walkthrough, of course, is the IRI charity auction. So we're going to go through and check out some of these uh, cool auction items. I want to start out with uh, probably one of the favorites we talked about on show, by the way. These awesome figures. We don't know who made these, by the way. So it's Peyton Young from 461 uh, with these sweet robots here. Uh, really digging the 33 uh, robot person myself. Uh, lots of stuff. This is one of the biggest ones I've seen this year for the IRI charity auction. Uh, as we go through, some cool, uh, of course, more killer B shirts on here. Uh, just a bunch of different mechanisms. The cheesy uh, Pusa shirt as well, too. 
uh, even tools as well. Uh, I hate pickles, but hey, why not have that up here uh, as well for these? So lots of cool stuff at the charity auction. First backpacks, tons of Robonauts merchandise uh, down here as well, too. Uh, some cool uh, components. Uh, looks like a 2056-2018 dry base going for uh, $61 as we film this on Saturday morning. Uh, lots of other different robot uh, components and mechanisms. Uh, 2168 competition hatch panel intake mechanism. Lots of cool stuff. Oh, yeah, and, and we got a couple things from the Neutrons. Uh, the uh, pasta and pesto uh, mug right now. Got to love that. Going for 30 bucks so far. Shout out to Christina Tia uh, over there for that. Um, some other cool stuff from Mars. We got even more down over here as well. Uh, stuff from Team Appreciate 2468. Hey, why not get yourself some uh, marshmallow uh, moon Oreos were appropriate for this year's game. Only 25 bucks for it. Not too bad. Some other things as well, too. Uh, some Green Machine t-shirts. Uh, there's a chair. I'm not sure if that's for sale. It is. Check this out. Uh, first uh, first themed chair by 868 going for $111 right now. Not too bad. Uh, we got some uh, Randall's ball gauges here uh, going for only $11. It's a pretty good steal so far. Uh, a few more things on both sides over here as well. Uh, this is something I really like here by one of the host teams, 1024 uh, Kilobytes. Uh, pretty cool trophies here. So these are pretty sweet. Looks uh, very 3D printed. I love that. Very cool. Uh, more stuff by the Goon Squad here. Uh, 2019 iRide Trophy is pretty sweet trophy this year. I like it a lot. Uh, and then I'll give another shout out to uh, Wordplay All Day. And of course, uh, one of our hosts, Christina Tia. Check these out. These are so freaking cool right here. The different uh, drawings that she's made on here. Some of these you can check out on her Etsy. I'll give her a little plug there. Um, but just a lot of cool stuff. And wrapping up over on the other side over here, uh, some cool robot socks. Uh, and this is pretty neat. I actually think this would be pretty cool to pick up, maybe hang it up in your room or something like that. Uh, but we have some of the 20 18 vault pieces as well too so once again i ride charity auction there's always cool stuff here every year uh by the way we'll probably be showing this afterwards but phone a friend in guys and uh, get your bids here at the i ride charity auction can't wait to see what these go for here at iri <laughs> all right so uh that's all just some of the cool stuff they had um you know tons of teams donated like intakes like from past years you saw there was a jar of pickles that went for $32 um, for whatever reason, uh, Conmaster2018 can try to explain his life choices in chat. Yeah, but uh, I'm sure he was in quite a pickle. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> the, okay. Another anyway. one for the jar. <laughs> <laughs> so, the jar of pickles. Yeah. But anyway, so um, that between the, uh, the silent auction and then also there was the uh, mentor matches, uh, which were done, the way those are done on Friday night is teams bid... You pay fifty dollars to uh, get in, and then basically there's then a, a further auction to buy alliance captain positions. So like um, there was an auction with probably about ten quals matches on Friday. We took a pause and did that, and so you spent money on that. The winning bid was uh, twelve hundred and forty one dollars. Yeah, yeah twelve forty one to be the number one seed by eleven fourteen. Uh, Karthik was out there waving his <laughs> waving his money around, but. Um, so yeah, so between those two things, they raised over twelve thousand uh, dollars for forty four eighteen, uh, which is just great. Um, so There's you know, only they... one bid that wasn't an FRC team number. Yeah, I think so. Um, but yeah, no, the mentor matches were great. They're just hysterical. Um, but yeah, they they raise a lot of money. The auction raises a ton of money, and then they also do another thing that doesn't raise money for their charity. But every team brings a uh, backpack full of school supplies. That's uh, donated to some of the local schools in the Indianapolis area. So every team brings one. A lot of teams bring more than one. Um, so usually under the table, you'll just see a, a ton of like backpacks. That's where all those came from. So just a lot of good charity stuff that happens at IRI, which is just like it's one of the most competitive events in the world, and it just raises a ton of money for some good causes. Yeah. All okay. right. So that's going to be about it for us on Finalysis this week. 
Tyler, would you let us know who donated and subscribed during our live stream tonight? Yeah, we'll bring up uh, some people since the last one. And um, by the way, if you subscribed over the weekend, I think I might be missing you. So I apologize about that. But uh, Elin942, uh, one of the 15 month sub, Adam14875 with 10 months. Hey, it's Leo uh, for uh, 10 months of support in a row. Says, uh, by the way, and you guys can answer this if you want. What are your thoughts on chess at IRI? Um, also, thanks for great content as usual. I'm not talking about it. No, <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I, I'll say I mean, it's IRI. Why the hell not? If it was a normal competition, I'm actually not a big fan of like students going off and doing things. Uh, but at IRI, I, I could care less to be honest with you. It's an it's an off season. Yeah. Like it's a community event too. Like you're networking. Yeah. Are you sure yeah. it's a community Chess event? Chess networking. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no doubt in there. Uh, a few other people uh, just read off on here. Uh, oh, hey, my list just updated all of a sudden, so I might have to go back a little bit. Uh, Sean Vanessa, 1720, uh, 18 months support. Shout out to the 1720 for their uh, win, by the way. Congratulations, uh, Sean, Ryan, and the rest of the team. Con Mastery, 1018, seven months support. Uh, PJ chiming in for uh, 20 months. Says, uh, how do, how do, say hi to y'all. How do y'all? All right. Well, you you typed it, so. <laughs> That's it. I don't know. <laughs> uh, it, it made me type something. Uh, Electronica won the Tier 1 support. Cadell 5024, Tier 1, OMG Robots 1 with Tier 1. Uh, Latham Mayhem 1519 uh, with a tier one. C Sherman with a tier one. Eric A417 tier one. Adam, uh, and we are back up to where I caught up to. So thank you, everybody, for your support. Uh, keeping fun, loud, live, independent, uh, just like RCAT 51 with 10 months of support right there. Hey, guys, I know it's summer uh, and viewership is always going to be a little bit lower, but we know you guys are our true dedicated fans. So thank you so much uh, for sticking with us throughout the entire season. Lots more cool t- content coming up. And thanks again, Show Action, show action for the 15 bits as well. All right. Uh, so, yeah, uh, make sure you let us know what you thought of the show. Any suggestions for future finalysis episodes, either on our Discord, our Facebook, Instagram, or on Chief Delphi, uh, so we can continue to make this the content that you want. Don't forget, during the off-season, we have FRC content live every Tuesday. Uh, we also host a lot of uh, off-season streams on our channel. I believe we're doing RoboCon this coming weekend, uh, which is Correct. in Lapeer, Michigan. So, yeah, we'll be doing RoboCon up in Lapeer. Oh, uh, it's, it's Lapeer. I would have pronounced it Lampier, by the way. That's like what they kept saying at IRI, but yeah, it's looking. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, PJ, I just want to chime about that because if you guys, uh, Robocom, you know, on paper, there's definitely some good teams there, but not like the highest of highest caliber. But uh, they're going to be piloting, uh, Manchester is piloting the new score clocks, by the way. So if the robots don't yeah. get you in, go check out the new uh, uh, score clocks and displays uh, and see how they look on stream. Pretty cool stuff. Yeah, it's just a great event. Uh, it's, there's, there's some good teams there. You got Chimera, yeah, you got 5460. But yeah, so definitely, uh, it definitely. Works I'm saying, come off well, the of IRI, it might be a little, yeah. a little bit yeah. a tier lower than that potentially. That's fair. It's it's a few tiers lower than IRI, but it is fun.